everyone, uh, I'm coming with another video today. Today is going to be slightly different because we're gonna watch an uh, arena match. Uh, I, I prefer watching Paper Magic myself, but it's true that especially for videos like these, maybe the arena uh, games are better because you can clearly see the player's hand and everything is like more clear. So I don't know, I just wanted to give it a try. Uh, I basically, what I did was that I wrote, uh, at first I wrote like a uh, arena invitational into YouTube and you know, uh, it, I immediately saw like these two big names so I decided to cover that if there was like inter any interesting game. I, I watched the, fi the actual finals first but I thought that the players played uh, really well even though it, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is nothing to talk about. I chose to uh, cover this specific game it's a uh, it's a game one of the upper bracket finals because I think there are like couple interesting decisions maybe uh, one of the players made a mistake or something and I always think that like those games are like a little bit more interesting to talk about because for example yesterday I made a video and like I, I, I said that uh, Jerry made a mistake and then I talked to Jerry on, on Twitter and he said and he like gave me a couple of reasons why he did that and that doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't a mistake but you know I I, I missed some of the reasons why he might not wanted to do what I was uh, saying that he could have and, and, and yeah so I, I just think that the games where I think one of the players made a mistake are like more interesting to cover at least for me so because I'm gonna learn something myself or you know the, the watchers so let's look at the deck lists um, I think Piotr was actually the only one who played Mono Blue in, in this tournament. This was like a very specific uh, tournament, it was double standard, so uh, people don't have access to sideboards. Uh, you had two decks, the first game the, the decks were cho chosen randomly and then the player who lost cho chose the deck for his opponent, etc. Um, so it's like a very different meta game. The best decks were like Esper, Mono White and Mono Red. And from what I've heard, this mono blue deck was really bad against mono white, but a lot of people chose to play mono red and Esper, and like the the the, the, the mono red uh, matchup was kind of close, but it, uh, this mono blue deck seemed to be very well positioned against Esper, so I guess it was kind of I guess it was kind of a meta game call. I actually was kind of surprised that uh, Canister was the only one playing this deck, uh, deck similar to this one actually even won a Pro Tour, and like, you can clearly see the power of the deck, right? It's like a, really good deck uh, and no one else was playing it uh, especially with the fact that it had a good Esper matchup I, I'm, I'm not actually sure if that's true because Esper was just such a good deck but um, you know if, if it was true then it's just very, very surprising but let's look at the Andrea Mengucci's deck list so you might be surprised why he has a sideboard here and the reason is uh, discard masterminds acquisition it actually lets you search search for a card in your sideboard so it was kind of a nice deck to just like Play one in your deck you can see a lot of cards with like these flipped ascantas and just like drawing cards and stuff so it was like nice to have one card in your deck that can do basically anything if you have enough mana and you know because you're not using a sideboard you can like put anything for like you know even like a healing grace so yeah let's let's get into the game So this this might look like a snap key, but he actually doesn't have like any of his like best cards, right? Right, like obsession, spell pierce, or wizard's rhetoric. But I still think you can really mulligan like, a hand like this against a deck full of like dodge erasures and one for one removal spells. Like a lot of the games will come down to just like your last threat or whatever. So I, I think it's a clear keep. Now Andrea is also thinking about his, his hand because he has a mix of four four lands and three spells, but it's kind of a, kind of slow. And if uh, sorry about that, if Piotr has like a, a fast draw with obsession, he just might be screwed. But I don't don't think that you can you know he can really afford to mulligan this hand. Like I think that maybe if they could like draw different seven, they would do it. But you know the risk of mulliganing is pretty high because like 
it's not likely that on average you're gonna get a better hand and you, 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 there's also always the downside that you just like hit seven seven spells on on a, uh, I mean six spells on the six card hand and then you just completely screw it so it's usually better to keep those hands so now it's an interesting decision with this up so as, as I said Andrea is playing like a heavy discard slash removal spell deck so in a lot of the cases, I think that even though you're kind of looking for a land, you want to top most of the spells. Like, I'm pretty sure that if this was like a spell of tears or a business Richard, he would top it, even though he kind of wants lands, but like, he's kind of likely to draw some lands eventually anyway, and you just want to have like a high density of spells. But specifically, this Tempest Jin is like pretty awkward. If, 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 if you keep it, then there's a chance that you just don't roll lands and then you are just stuck with these two Tempest Chains. Also, it's just not a very good card in this matchup because it just plays right into these like Prima, uh, Mortifies, Absorbs and stuff. It just basically kind of plays into what uh, Andrea Manguchi is, Manguchi is trying to do it. Plus, you have the downside of just like maybe there are not lands in like the you know, top 5 cards of your deck and then you just completely screw yourself for no reason. So, uh, I like the, to put it on the bottom. It makes sense. I just wanted to point it out because I think it looks like a clear bottom, but uh, it's actually not that obvious if it was like a different on one card. So you can either play a Surge Mare or a um, tr Trickster, but the Surge Mare wouldn't really be dealing damage. Also, it's bad against potential Kaya in the future. And I just think uh, Piotr wants to, want to start dealing damage, so playing the Trickster is better. So far, no real decisions. So this turn is interesting, right? Um, Piotr can either, like, he has a bunch of options. He can, like, play out two creatures, but that's uh, pretty scary against, like, Cryocarnarium. Or he can play, like, a Trickster plus a Spell Pierce. Or he can play a Tempest Gene. I'm actually not sure, this is like a pretty hard turn, at least it would be for me. Uh, maybe it's easier if you play the matchup a lot, but I haven't, so like it's not as obvious for me. But what he ends up doing is that he just plays the chin. That might look surprising, but I actually think it kind of makes sense because he gets it uh, under Absorb. Like the, the biggest disadvantage of Tempest Gene is that like Absorb is kind of awkward in this matchup. Uh, you know, you have a bunch of like flesh, flesh stuff uh, and like cheap creatures. So absorb, absorb is usually it's not a good trade for you. You either you are either down on mana or you have to play with an awkward timing or whatever. Uh, but it's good if you can counter Shin. So even though Kanister kind of knows that you know it might just get mortified or whatever, and like maybe if he drew a land, he can go like Shin plus Spell Pierce. I just think it's like fine to just like play it. Maybe he doesn't have anything, and then it's great. And he, you know even if he does, you at least like use the chain so it's not awkward in the future, so I think it's fine. Andrea has to kill it, obviously, he doesn't want to play it into a dive, dive down on a spell pier or a spell pierce. It was just being able to land to play, it's not really that relevant, but... I guess, um, maybe, yeah. Oh, it was better to play the blue land because if he draws a top land and he wants to keep it absorbed, then that might be better. It's not, it doesn't really matter. So here, Piotr, Piotr could have either... So he had, again, like, many options, right? He could have either played Paramounter and pass with tri both Trickster and Spell Pierce up, or you can play two Paramounters as he did and keep a Spell Pierce, or you can just like play no Paramounter and uh, keep up Trickster and Spell Pierce. I think it makes sense to play the non-flesh creatures first. Like, I know that he can get Kaya's Wrath here, but I think that if Andrea has that card, he's kind of screwed this game anyway. But Andrea is playing a bunch of uh, Chemistry Insights, so it's possible that maybe like next turn or in like future turns, he just like draws more cards and then he draws Kaya's Wrath. And at that point, you want to have the flesh creature in your hand. So like when that happens, you can actually play something and like keep attacking. Like obviously, 
maybe if you like knew 100% that he has the Kaya's Rod, then it's like maybe better to, you know, not play these two creatures or whatever. But I think that with like so many cards in Andrea's hand, it makes sense to put to maximize a lot of pressure, hope that Andrea doesn't have it, and then for future turns, keep, keep the flesh creature in, in his hand. So I like the play so far. So Andrea could have either played this uh, Mastermind Acquisition or um, Hinnister's Insight. Um, I don't actually know what's right. The way the, way the game is going to play out, uh, it, this might have been fine, but uh, I just don't really... Oh, let's see. Does he have a land in his hand? Okay, he doesn't. So it makes sense, I guess. I think I was trying to say that um, if he had like another big spell that he wanted to resolve, it might have been better to play the acquisition because you know, if he doesn't get countered, you get you can get Kazrat, and if it does, you at least like basically duress the counter, and then next turn you can follow it up. But he doesn't even have land for the Teferi, and the Teferi isn't even that good here. So it's probably better to just like play the inside. It's probably gonna resolve because it's not really like an action card. The Kaiser doesn't know what Minguchi's hand, and maybe like draw into lands. Then because of that, maybe you can like draw the Kaiser's rod or just like double spell with like you know he doesn't know what he's gonna draw. But you know, but playing this with the hand he has just basically makes him dead. Like it forces the spell pierce because he can just get Kaiser's rod. Then he gets attack for four, and his hand just doesn't do anything. So I playing the inside makes it makes sense. <clears throat> so Ganister so doesn't actually. Um, End up playing this search where I mean I haven't played the matchup enough, but I think that if he gets guys right here, he's kinda screwed anyway. But uh, but but that might not be the case. It's possible that, you know, he gets guys routed, he plays Trickster and then he draws like a of session and starts drawing cards and he can like maybe still win. But from from my point of view, if, if he gets guys right here, he's he's like dead kind of dead anyway, or at least it doesn't look, look very good for him, and if that's the case, you just want to uh, pressure the most you can, but I have a lot of confidence in this, like, I'm just like talking about it, that, like, I'm talking about my thought process, obviously I can also see Andrea's hand, which, um, you know, can maybe, uh, maybe I'm like not seeing certain things that the people who are, uh, the, the players were, were thinking about or something, uh, but, but, but yeah, I'm not necessarily saying this is a mistake, there's like a, a different play that I think is uh, a mistake, so that one I'm gonna talk about more. So yeah, Andrea drew two cards, he, he hit the lands, but he didn't actually find anything that like does anything against these creatures, right? So, what you can do? He can play like a Kaya, which is fine, but it doesn't actually like do do that much. It kills like one of these creatures uh, if it resolves, but it's not really impactful enough. Um, and yeah, like maybe it would look fine, but but it it's not really impactful enough. It doesn't do that much, and also you can you, you probably wanna. It's better to play the Kaya on six lands, so you can go like Kaya plus absorb. So Andrea is uh, gonna play a different card this turn. Yeah, so he plays this mastermind acquisition. I and, and Peter decides to not spell Pierce it, and I just don't understand that. that this is actually the reason why I'm making this video because I would like to hear an opinion about that. So when I it when, when when I saw this, I actually didn't know or didn't realize that you can search your deck as well. So I was like looking at um let's look at it. I was looking at Andrea's sideboard and there there isn't actually a sweeper, right? 
the reason why there isn't any sweeper is sweeper is because you can just search your search your library if you need one, so it makes sense. But anyway, I was watching, uh, I was looking at the sideboard, and I was like, oh, there isn't isn't anything that actually helps him in any meaningful way, so it makes sense that Peter Pilder doesn't counter it, right? But you can just like, I even I, oh, do you have to choose why you why you cast it? So the card even says that he's gonna search his library. Well, the, doesn't this mean that you can just get a Kai's Rod or Cry Cry Corner? Even like, why would you allow him to do that? I understand that if it was like a Day of Judgment instead of Kai's Rod, or you know, you had like a Retort uh, instead of Spell Pierce, so you can counter the Cry Corner, or like you know, if you could just like counter the, the Sweeper that he gets from it, then it's obviously better to not counter it because you just make him use the mana next turn and you counter it then, and you know. That's just better, but because <coughs> because Rod, what am I saying? Kai's Rod is kind of it's not a separate But because specifically Cry of Carnarium costs only three mana, and you can't actually spell pierce it uh, if he has a land, then I just think that not countering countering this is super wrong. I just don't understand it. Like what what else do you want your spell pierce to do? Like this isn't this like the best scenario possible for the spell pierce? He played like a super awkward, clunky, expensive card. You can pierce it. So, I apo by the way, I apologize about uh, saying guys Rod wasn't counterable. I just mistaken this up in for some reason. Maybe you guys were thinking that uh, Manguchi is going to go for guys Rod. But even, even, even then, like, you can still have two lands. I don't really know. So Andrea doesn't obviously know about the spell pierce, but he still has Cry of Cornarium plus Absorb. So also that's why he searched for Cry instead of um Kai's Rod, even though you know Kaiser can deploy a creature that doesn't die to it. So Kaiser obviously didn't see what he searched for. So he decided to not even deploy the search mare, because he's afraid of Kai's Rod. He doesn't know that uh, he searched for Cry of Cornarium instead because he uh, wanted to hold up. Absorb as well. I think it's kind of likely that um, Minguchi holds one of the Absorbs, so you can kind of maybe figure that Cry in that spot was better than Absorb, and uh, playing the Search Mirror was better here. But obviously, I would also be scared of Kazrat. But like, if he, if he has a land with Kazrat, aren't you like kind of anyway? Maybe you should just like, you know, hope that he searched for Cry, or not hope, like, you know, it makes sense that he did and just play the Search Mirror. He actually he played the search mirror there. Um, he plays cry, and then he goes like uh, trickster end of turn, spell pierces absorb and attacks for six, puts him to two, loots, and he finds another creature. Maybe get the win. Like, I just think both of those plays were pretty bad. I'm not sure if I explained it like enough. So like the reason why he didn't play the the, the search mirror was that you know he searched for any card it could have been a Kai's Rod why would he search for Cry instead of Kai's Rod? Well the reason is that you know Minguchi doesn't know if he has a spell pierce or, or retort so maybe he thinks that he uh, needs a sweeper with absorb backup and the creatures that uh, Canister has in play both all die to minus two minus two. Obviously, it's kind of dangerous because Canister can draw like Chris, Obsession, Jin, or play Search Mare. But overall, he decided that you know holding up Absorb is better. And I think that if you're Canister, you can at least like think about that from his perspective. It makes kind of sense. Like it's pretty likely that he has, has Absorb or, or like another different free mana card in his hand. And if that's the case, searching the Cray might be better in like higher percentage of the time than a Rod. Also like in that spot, uh, either of those two sweepers means that you're kinda dead. But with a with a cry if you actually play the search for you you have a chance. So I think I think it was just better to play it. Yeah, so so now he's like using spot to put a two two into play because he's just like out of gas and he just needs to hope that maybe she doesn't have anything 
So, yeah, pretty, pretty awkward. awkward. Yeah, so look at what happened. Like, uh, had he played a Surgemare last turn, he would have both Surgemare and uh, Trickster in play. He would have put into two with under Trickster in hand. That he might want to, you know, play on his turn to play around the, these Absorbs. Like, by, by the way, like, uh, because... I mean, not necessarily. I was trying to... I was about to say that the, the, the turn that he played Acquisition... In, he, he kind of signified that he didn't have a sweeper, which might have not been necessarily the case. Maybe he just like wanted to wait a turn uh, to play around spell pierce. So yeah, I'm not sure about that. So he plays the search mark, but he passes with the trickster, and once again, I think that's a mistake. Like if he, uh, the reason why you wouldn't play the trickster is that if he has Kai's rat. You're just dead, you don't have anything. But if he does, like, how are you gonna win with this 2 2? Like, I guess you can flood out super badly and you draw. Oh, what happened? Is it still working? Yeah, okay, I apologize for that. Something happened to my computer. Um. You know, obviously he has it, it's better to keep it, but like you're, you're most likely not going to win anyway, but this can just get absorbed, you're, like you can just get like Mortify plus Absorb, and not not putting it into play is just like <laughs> super bad in my opinion. Like how can you play around the Sweeper in this spot and just like play into Absorb? Not only that he counters your card, but he also gains free life that he like might not be able to gain anyway, like you just make a card that would just stay in his hand and you know not do anything into an actual great card in this spot by not putting it into play. So Andrea plays Sakaira instead of playing Mortified, which I like. This on this turn Kaya kinda does the same thing as Mortify. Uh you know Pyotr he it gets gains to life so it's basically the same as killing uh this trickster. Also Pyotr can has to respect it and attack it, so like, it does actually quite a bit on this turn, and the Mortify is always going to be great in the future, whereas if you play Mortify now, maybe the Kaya would be kind of awkward later, so I really like playing the Kaya here. Yeah, I think Andrea played really well this game. Not that his decisions were like super hard, but he didn't make any mistakes, so like, you know. In my opinion. So now Peter is realizing that it, this is like pretty awkward to get the absorb. Andre, I don't even remember if Andre actually counters it. Because playing inside might, might actually end up being better. But, you know, he might not have had the inside and maybe he was stuck with like two absorbs in his hand and yeah. I, don't know, <clears throat> yeah, I think he should play it, yeah. Absorb is usually like, kind of awkward in, in, in this matchup, so like, when you have a good chance to, to play it for a good effect, which that turn certainly was, now he's at 11 with Kaya in play uh, and he has like two insights and Teferi, so that's a great spot, right? Instead, if he played uh, inside, it might get kind of awkward, he has free less life, there is one more creature in play, you know, some bad things can happen, but with countering it, he's just like a ver in very safe position. And now, his life total is high enough that Canister actually has to like, start respecting his planeswalkers, the, the, the damage isn't more relevant than the Kaya at this point. And yeah, now, now this surrender I just plays the fairy plus Mortify and it's over. So yeah, uh, I just wanted to try covering uh, an arena game instead of uh, a card game game, <laughs> uh, tabletop, tabletop, tabletop game. Uh, let me know if you liked it more or less. Uh, also, if there is like any match that you would like to me like me to review, uh, definitely let me know. I don't really mind as long as it's interesting. And yeah, I'll be back next time. See you.